So this is my recipe for Miracle Fudge. Now this one you can vary the finished article by uh, the way you finish essentially the, the recipe. So this one I'm making for a friend who likes her fudge really quite soft. So it's not um, a crisp fudge, it's just a bit of um, squidginess to it. So, you start with your ingredients, obviously. And this is um, 140 grams of butter, um, 400 grams of caster sugar, and a can of condensed milk. Now you want to put this in your biggest glass bowl, or at least the biggest bowl you can get. That will fit in your microwave because this will bubble up quite considerably. So essentially you start by heating it just to melt. And um, if you've got a um, 800 watt um, microwave, you can do this in 10 or 12 minutes. I've got a 700 which takes it up to about 15. So if you nuke it in um, two minute intervals for a 800 watt, I do it in three minute intervals because we've got a 700. So initially you just heat it to melt and then you're heating to get it up to temperature. Now for fudge you're going for 115C. Now I would suggest that each time you get to the end of your two or three minutes, you take it out and give it a good stir. Because microwaves heat unevenly. So this way you help to kind of equalize the heat around the bowl. And make sure that everything is melted and combined as you go. It's like, because you're not stirring it constantly as you would a normal fudge then there's a chance that the butter will just separate out and just sit on the top so this does take a while I've put the um, clock out so you can see exactly as I said with a 800 watt machine you can get this done in about 12 or 15 minutes. So once your butter is melted and you can feel that the sugar is pretty much melted, you want to get a thermometer out. Now I've got one of these laser ones. Um, obviously if you've got um, an a, um, kind of a probe thermometer, you don't leave it in the bowl in between zaps because that would just end in tears. So take it out the microwave to give it a slight airing, give it a good stir and once I've stirred it quite well then I measure the temperature. So you can see I do that three or four times in the process here. Now the last little bit from about 105 up to 114, 115 takes a while. So Gotta keep your eye on it about then because then it's more likely to bubble over when it's going to that last little bit. So um, you can leave this pretty much plain or just add a little bit of vanilla but these I'm doing rum and raisin so in my little pan here I've got about two or three tablespoons of rum and about maybe 40 grams of raisins and I'm just going to bring that up to a bubble and then turn it off and leave it whilst the fudge continues to cook just to absorb
Now this does take a while and it is a little tedious, but it's no more tedious or less tedious than actually doing it in a pan where you have to stand there and stir constantly. So doing it this way is a lot faster and a lot easier. And uh, when this gets up to temperature, as I said, it, it can creep over quite slowly. So you can get to 113 degrees and you don't want to carry on, but that you kind of have to. You really have to get this up to 115 degrees C minimum. That's your fudge point. Now, because I'm going for a um, much softer, smoother kind of fudge here, I'm not going to give it the last bit of heat. So you add in your flavouring, so just vanilla, just um, a teaspoon or so of vanilla. In this case I'm sticking in my arm raisin and just whisking that in. It's going to fizz, it's going to bubble at you. Just be careful. Give it a good stir. Now at this stage, if you want a traditional harder um, fudge, stick it back in the microwave for another two minutes before you move on. But again, I'm going for a soft one, so I'm not. Now moving on to um, the beating stage. Now you can do this by hand, but I really don't want to. So I'm going to put it in my machine. And you just need to beat it until it loses some of its luster. Now it should take five minutes or so by machine, maybe ten minutes if you're doing it by hand. Um, again, you don't have to do this. If you want to make... Um, a type of fudge called tablet which is really quite crystalline and quite um, it breaks into shards rather than pieces it's kind of a Scottish version of fudge and then you just pour it into your pan like this but just to give it a little bit of smoothness and to kind of break down the sugar particles you've got in this I just give it a quick beat I'm only giving it about five minutes I'm not giving it the full whack I would otherwise keep going until it's really um, lost all its shine and gone really pale and then press it into the, the tin. Now this tin I've just lined with a little bit of foil and wiped around some spray oil just so it doesn't stick. And then just leave that to cool. It should take, again, depending on um, how crisp you want it to be, if you've gone the full, if you've heated it all the way up and then heated it after you added your flavoring, it should only take about an hour to set. Unlike this one, where um, after about an hour and a half, it's still got a little bit of kind of gooiness to it, which is about right. So I stuck it in the freezer for half an hour or so before I cut it, so it would cut easier. And then stacked it in boxes with some um, grease proof just to stop it from sticking. So that is Miracle Fudge. It may seem like more of a palaver, but it is a lot quicker than, than the other. A lot less washing up, unless you're using a machine like I did. Um, so yeah, this is my Miracle Fudge recipe. I will put the different variations up on the blog post, but that is pretty much it. So if you make some, then send me a, a drop me a line and see what you like about, or if you like the process. If you're a traditional fudge maker, try it this way. It certainly makes everything easier. I'll see you again next week.